Ludwig's target. I guess it's the first time that you're play, playing here. Uh, it's the, thank you. Um, it's the first time we played at the Blues Festival, but uh, I think maybe nearly 10 years ago we played here with uh, TM Stevens. So it's the second time we played in this room, but the first time being part of the festival. Uh, how do you feel about a blues festival? Because uh, the Daily was known as a blues rock band. With the new album, it's going, you said, 100% rock this time. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, I think that um, people with an open mind can yeah. see the connection from what we're doing now to blues. And part of our set will have an element of traditional blues in it. Um, and we hope that people can see the progression uh, of the band from our blues roots through to what we're doing now, which is playing more accessible contemporary rock. And we're trying to broaden our audience because we've found um, that when you are marketed as strictly a blues band, you really narrow your acceptance because people have, some people, particularly young people, they have a, a negative opinion when they hear the word blues. They always feel, oh, it's depressing or it's slow or it's boring, which is not true, we know. But um, the perception of blues is that uh, it's just a bunch of old guys, you know, crying about their women or something. Um, so we're trying to uh, attract a younger and fresh uh, audience and bring them to the blues through our rock and roll. Yeah. I guess part of it is also trying kind of new territories like you did on the higher album with the song like Dark and Lonely Place, which is, I guess, was a big surprise for a lot of your fans. Yeah. Well, um, I think that if the band, any musician or any artist, if you stay stagnant, if you don't move forward, you die. You know, so that doesn't always mean it's always successful <laughs> or better. But uh, I think as an artist, if you feel that you're moving forward or you're moving, uh, you're progressing, um, then you can sleep at night. I think um, my worst nightmare would be to just have one style of one music and have to play this for the rest of my life. I think that would be equivalent to hell, you know. Yep. Um, and most people seem to be accepting what we're doing because I think they can see that we're honest and we're really, we're really trying hard. We're not trying uh, um, to sell anyone something we don't believe in. Mm. So uh, generally that um, carries the music through. Part yeah. of that development is also playing some acoustic songs in your set, I've heard. Yes, well that's terrifying for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although this is our last... Um, our last show of this tour. So we've been on the road for, I think, nearly six weeks. Um, and it's the first tour that we've played acoustic guitar. I, I've always been a bit uh, intimidated by yeah. the acoustic guitar because the guys that I like to hear are amazing. Uh, we've got a guy in Australia called Tommy Emanuel. I don't know if you know him, yeah. but um, he's an amazing acoustic player. And I've sort of always felt, well, if you can't play like that, then, then don't play. Yeah. But, I, um, I got talked into trying it by our band and our, um, and our tour manager and um, I've been really surprised that uh, the audience has been very warm towards it and, um, and after the show when we get to talk to people, a lot of people have said that they really enjoyed it so I've got a little bit more confidence um, from that because uh, yeah, it was, I wasn't happy about it at the beginning but now I'm enjoying it, I must say. Yeah. 
But that's good being that honest, telling it that you didn't feel that secure about it. So it makes makes a lot of sympathy, I guess, also for uh, for the fans hearing <laughs> that because that's not usual. Oh, See, really? uh, the usual stereotype of a of a rock star is bang, here I am, and I can't fail, oh. and, and stuff like that. Oh. But uh, it's I think it's really great somebody being true, saying that he felt insecure. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I suppose because I feel what my job is, is I don't, I don't necessarily feel like a, a musician as such. I feel like my job is to generate energy. And, um, and I, my job is to transmit energy to the audience and, um, and to make the people feel better when they leave than yeah. when they came. And so whether that's singing or playing or whatever I have to do and I, I didn't feel that the acoustic guitar I was um, transmitting enough energy but then I actually learned a lot I learned that you know I can really bring the music down I can almost make it silent in the audience and sing really quietly play really quietly and then I found oh there's a whole other type of energy mm. and so oh where my hand go and um, <laughs> and that's something that I've really enjoyed so it's um, um, it's been a big learning curve for me, but now it's, it's something that I've, I think I'm beginning to uh, have a control on and mm. I can use in the show as equally as the power mm. rock thing. So um, it's, it's, been, it's been great, actually, yeah. You've been touring Germany now again. Yeah. You're coming from Australia. It's a long way, but it was kind of an accident when you started out here touring in uh, late 90s been a friend of Perth. That's true. I um, actually the first two times I came, I was playing uh, rhythm guitar with Dave Hole. Mm. I don't know if you know. Yeah, Dave, sure. Dave Hole. He played here at the Boost Target. He did. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't in the band then. I was in the, in the band in '98 uh, and '99, mm. and uh, I toured around Australia twice and uh, around all around Europe. He had really extensive tours, and um, I sort of saw how it worked and stuff, and then. And then a friend of mine was living in, uh, in Rottweil and he, um, he, uh, he, said, he came to Perth and said, oh, look, if you ever want a gig in, uh, in Germany, I can get you a gig. And I said, okay, well, get us a gig. And he said, well, if, we get, if I get you a gig, will you come? And I said, book the gig and you'll come. <laughs> Answer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, I'll talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Go and put him on, I say hello in the interview. It's hilarious. <laughs> it will stop soon. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh, that, you have to keep that in the interview. <laughs> it's the first interview, first time that I didn't put the, the sound uh, off. It's always the first time. So last, night I, um, last night I went to pick up a bottle of water and Normally it's got no bubbles, but anyway, it had bubbles and I opened it and it just went <laughs> all over me, all over the pedals and everything. Anyway, so I had to make a joke about that. It was fine then, but um, things happen. Um, so where was I? Oh yeah, a friend of mine was living in Germany, he had a German girlfriend. He came back to Perth, I met up with him and he said, uh, you know, if you want a gig in Germany, I'll get you a gig. So I said, get us a gig and we'll be there. So we ended up with three gigs in, in Rottweil, Tübingen and Trossingen, I think, in that little yep. area yep. there. And um, I think out of the three gigs, we got two little articles in the newspaper and then we used those and then the next tour we had 10 gigs and then the next tour 20 gigs and then I think we got up to 50 something gigs in a tour. And, um, and uh, I think after about 
20 tours that we did. We got, we had they were quite long, nine weeks and every day. And uh, I think we did 52 gigs in 65 days or something, one tour. It was pretty hardcore in a little van and really long drives, 800 kilometres, 700 kilometres. And then, um, and then we did an album with Kevin Shirley in, in Australia. And, um, and that album we got a deal with Jazz House mm. Records, Jazz House Booking, and then um, it just makes it a lot easier when you're with a company and hire from Jazz House Booking, we've got Fidelity, and then all of a sudden, you know, we have played in better venues and better hotels and the tours are organised a bit better and, um, and things started to come up for us. So we've now done, it's our fifth album with Jazz House and um, every year it just comes up slowly. So. Um, I think this is our 26th tour here now, since 2000, so we've been busy. And you've been in a lot of, uh, uh, had a lot of flights, yeah. long flights. Yeah. How do you cope with that? I don't like it. It's small, especially in economy. For me, it's like, <laughs> it's very small. So um, I learned how to meditate mm. because I just used to go crazy, especially when they when they bring the food and then you're finished and then they don't take it away for like mm. an hour or something and it's sitting there. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, uh, and I learned, um, uh, you know, maybe have a couple of Jackies and a little nap and I just try to just switch off. So from Perth to Dubai is I think 11 hours or 10, 10 and a half and then, then you've got three or so hours in Dubai and then Dubai to wherever, Frankfurt or Munich is another six or seven. So from the time we leave to the time we get to where we're going is normally 24 hours. So, Quite. but it's just terrible. <laughs> it's not much fun, no. Okay, Michael, thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure, thank you. Out of bed has been a big challenge of late I've been missing days And my hands have got the shakes My head is cotton, but cloudy My eyes are going pink 